Mm. All right, did you find the office okay? Yeah, it was a little confusing with the parking, but you know, I'm happy that we got here. It was a it was a rough ride over mm -hmm. here. Yeah, yeah, I know. It can be difficult to find the place. Yeah. And parking especially. Yeah. And Mark was just he was just acting up so much because he was trying to get out of the car, so I'm happy I made it here. Mm hmm He wanted to just get out of the car. Yeah. It's wow. just yeah, it happens a lot. So I'm mm -hmm. happy like we're here. Okay. Yeah, well I'm happy you're here as well. Um, my name is Gabriella. I'm a graduate student here at the clinic who has a supervisor. So I will only be sharing the information with the supervisor and my clinic team. If it's okay with you, can I tell you more about confidentiality? Yes. So basically, as I said, I will only be sharing the information with the clinic staff and my supervisor regarding your case today, um, unless it's about hurting yourself or anyone else. In that case, I would say exactly who we would talk to and what we would talk to them about. What do you think of that? That's good. I mean, do I have a choice with that? Or? Not necessarily. That's, um, that's our procedures here at the clinic. Okay. All right. um, so some people come to therapy for self-exploration. Others come for um, a specific problem. Um, and today we will be going through a set of questions to understand the goals for your son um, and to understand his um, presenting problems today. Um, so all the information you share with me today will help us to determine if our clinic can best meet the needs of your son. However, we may determine that um, it is not possible that we cannot accommodate for his needs if that's the case. We will give you referral sources and all the information you would need. Okay. Hope you can help us. Mm -hmm. um, if we do determine that our clinic can meet your needs, we would match him with the therapist and they would be working together moving forward. Um, so we have a lot to cover today. I'd like to take some notes if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. What do you mean you're writing them? Um, the notes is to ensure that I'm getting all the information correctly. Okay, so what is the reason that you're seeking services for your child at this time? Yeah, Mark has just been, he's been acting up, I mean, as long as I can remember, but it's just gotten really bad, and now we're just really worried that we can't handle him anymore, and we just really need help. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping this is gonna be helpful for him. Mm -hmm. How has he been acting recently? He's just, he doesn't really listen, and he gets really angry. Mm -hmm. um, he gets really upset when we can't get his way. Mm -hmm. um, he's been having issues at school, and um, like, I mean, there's some people that he, someone gets along with, but he doesn't really get along with. He doesn't really have any friends. Mm -hmm. You know, he's had issues with teachers, like personally, and in the home, he's just, he's just kind of revved up his issues, and I'm, I'm really worried, because I think we're all kind of scared in the household, and we're kind of like walking on eggshells. Mm -hmm. to kind of please him and appease him and it's just too much. I mean, he's 12 years old and I'm an adult, I'm his mm -hmm. mother and I have to like appease him and mm -hmm. make things for him and I'm, it's just too much. It's too much. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. it sounds like this has been very difficult for you. Yeah, it's been a lot. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that he doesn't listen, mm -hmm. he um, is acting out in classroom, he's not behaving well at home, is this correct? Mm -hmm. okay. He, like, there our final straw that we decided, my wife and I decided that mm -hmm. we had to bring him here, was, you know, he wanted to play video games um, the other night, and mm -hmm. we told him he can't do that. And so, you know, he had a huge tantrum, he got upset, and so we thought he was okay in his room, because he got really quiet, and we're like, okay, well, he's calmed down now. Mm -hmm. And we went to sleep, and then I went to go check on him before, you know, I finally, did the final sleep in, and um, he had left the house. So apparently he just decided to kind of leave, leave the house. We had no idea where he was. He came back the next morning. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just really worried, because this is just like, he just does not want to listen at all. Wow, that, what was that like for you? It, it was terrifying. It was terrifying, and it made me angry when I, mm -hmm. I saw him again, but it was terrifying because I had no idea where he was. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like, I don't know how he could do that to us. We were all worried in the house for him. And then when he came back and he was just, like, so nonchalant about it, had no idea what he put us through. And almost like he didn't care mm -hmm. that he put us through it. It just, 
made us even more upset. He still hasn't told us what he was doing. Mm-hmm. So his safety is a big concern to right. you. And our safety, too, because he gets so upset and so angry that, like, I'm worried about my daughter, mm-hmm. you know, because she's a few years younger, and, and I would hope that they would be close, and he's the big sister, mm-hmm. and he would be watching over her, and they'd be protective of each other, but it's not that. Like, she's scared of him. Mm-hmm. Wow, your daughter's scared of him? I think so. She completely shuts down when he's in the room with her. Mm-hmm. So your daughter and him do not have as close of a relationship no. as you would like? No. And you mentioned he ran out of the home but came back in the morning. Yeah. yeah? And you did not know where no, he where was. He told was. Us. He's kind of smug about it. Like, he's okay. purposely not wanting to tell us. We're trying to figure out what happened mm-hmm. hopefully like he wasn't in trouble or he was safe or mm-hmm. he didn't get into trouble but we don't know and it's almost kind of like he, he's purposely not telling us mm-hmm. so you're hidden like from what's really going yeah. on with him it is yeah it must be really difficult for you as a mother it is and I'm, I'm at this point I'm just kind of like I'm over it I'm trying my hardest mm-hmm. but it's just we have a lot of family stressors going on right now I, I was working part-time because he was taking up so much time with school and mm-hmm. trying to make sure he was okay. And, you know, my wife was working full-time, but I lost my job recently. Um, and so it's a financial strain. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, now I'm spending more time at home, but I don't want to be home because he's causing so much stress. Mm-hmm. And it's causing me to fight so much more with my wife. Mm-hmm. And I have less patience, and it's just, I don't have an outlet anymore. And he's just adding to it it's almost Mm -hmm. like he sees me upset and he wants to get me more upset that's what it feels like yeah so you feel like he's doing this intentionally that's that's what I feel like and it's horrible that I would think that way about my son but I'm just Mm -hmm. I'm I'm so over it Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to do and I can't talk about it really to anybody else because I feel bad about it I'm sorry I'm unleashing to you but Mm -hmm. it's like the first time I've been able to talk about this because I don't have any friends I can't bring any he doesn't have any friends himself it's minimized my you know, relationships with, like, mothers that I knew, you know, like, we were in the same, like, kindergarten group together, and they just, they can't deal with him. They don't Mm want to have play groups and play dates with him. So I'm just, like, isolated, and my wife, she gets to work full-time, and she gets to be away for most of it. Mm -hmm. So your son acts out within his peers as well, is that what you're saying? Yeah, he doesn't really have any friends. Mm -hmm. He has, I mean, there's this one kid from the neighborhood who comes around, um, and I'm even kind of worried because, like, whenever they come around, he just kind of, Mark just kind of bosses them around. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't seem like a real friendship. I wouldn't want to be treated that way. I feel mm-hmm. bad, but that's my son who's, I feel like he's kind of bullying him, and mm-hmm. the other kid just kind of takes it. So it's not really, a, it doesn't seem like a real friendship, but I feel bad because Mark wouldn't have anybody else to play with mm-hmm. if this kid didn't come around. Okay. Wow, that seems like a lot is happening in your home right now yeah. and it's it's adding a lot of stress to you um and in your family dynamics it's it's you, you seem like it's a big concern and a big problem right now yeah you mentioned that your family's going through some stressors and you um I, you told me about the fact that you're part-time now mm-hmm. um is there anything else that is a stressor no in i your think family life? I think, I mean, that's a stress for that. Like, I don't know if it's that or if it's just Mark or if it's a combination, but, like, I'm I'm fighting more with Patty. Like, my wife and I have been just bickering more about the little mm-hmm. things. And, um, I mean, this past, you know, this past time when he just left the house and he, mm-hmm. um, she was just so through and she just kind of avoided everything and went back into the room. And I was the one that was stuck trying to deal with it, but I was mm-hmm. just done. And I just feel it's weird by her. And, and my poor daughter, she's just scared. And she mm-hmm. sees all of this. Yeah. And so she can't even be herself. So I think it's just, that's just all impacting. Mm-hmm. It's a major thing that's impacting us. Mm-hmm. So what are some things that your son would like help with, if you could name a few? I don't I think he thinks he's okay. He is upset that we're here today. He doesn't understand it all. Yeah. And like, you know, he, in his mind, it's not the issue because everybody kind of bows down to him. Everybody just kind of gives up to what okay. he wants. So it's just kind of, 
I don't think that he thinks there's any issue. If there's any issue, it's really the fact that he doesn't get more of what he wants. That's what it seems like to me, but he doesn't really want to talk to me about mm -hmm. anything. So he doesn't see this as a problem at all? I don't, I don't, he hasn't been able to communicate that with me, or he doesn't tell me that at all. And when did you begin to notice that his, he was behaving in this way? You know, I'd love to say that, you know, like it was something recent or there's something that really happened, but mm -hmm. I, I think he's always been that way. Okay. He's always been, you know, the kid that like cried a lot, you know, the baby that cried more and he was like, it was hard to like, you, could, you know, make him feel better when he was baby mm -hmm. or soothe him. And like the terrible twos were terrible. Like mm -hmm. I, I was assuming like all my other friends, you know, because we was a whole bunch of us that had kids together, like mm -hmm. their kids were also going through a lot. And I thought like, oh, you know, that's what I'm going through. And then I, I went into some of the things they're going through. And that was like a piece of cake compared to what Mark was doing. Mark mm -hmm. was just like, you know, disobedient for no reason. Mm -hmm. And he's always been that way. I just haven't had a break for 12 years. You haven't had a break? Haven't had a break. I have always to be. I have to always be on guard. He's mm -hmm. just always acting out. He's always throwing tantrums. He's always kind of like, you know, you never. It's nothing. Never face value with him. And I think even when he was a kid, it was like he would say something and then do something else just because. It's it's always been that way, even since he was a baby. Yeah. Must have been very tough for you, raising him. Yeah. When he was tough and. It's still and tough. Arm, like, and you're on guard. Yeah. Where I, I was telling Patty, like I, well, really Patty was telling me that she wants to put him into like a, you know, inpatient behavioral center because we just can't. Like this is our last, mm -hmm. this is our last hurrah before we're just like, we need to put him away because we can't be watching him all the time. Mm -hmm. We just can't do it. Like I'm at my wit's end. She's given up. Mm -hmm. And I don't want it to impact, but we still have another daughter to raise. You still want to give care to your daughter and make yeah. sure she's safe. Yeah. While giving your son the best opportunity to get better. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. And I don't know what else to do. So I know you mentioned that he ran out of the home recently. Yeah. Can you tell me another example of when he acted out at home or with his friends? I mean, he's, he's always acting out. So say a lot of the times, I think one of the few times that he doesn't act out is if, you know, it's something that he has to give a lot of attention to, like video games. He loves video games or TV. And he's so focused on that that he's not caring about what other whatever's going on. But if he's not enjoying himself, you know, or he's not really, like, engrossed in something, he's just going to find some some reason to kind of, like, get what he wants. Okay. And so it can, it can – and sometimes – you know, you think that he's like quiet or he's in a good mood, but really he's, it feels like he's plotting and scheming mm -hmm. to do some other stuff. And then later on, I'm like consequences because he didn't get the, the candy that he wanted. Mm -hmm. So either he's completely like acting out or it feels like sometimes I'm just like, I'm waiting for him to act out or he's like planning to do something because he's upset and he won't talk about what he's upset about. Wow. It must be frustrating to always be waiting and on edge yeah. with your own child. Yeah, it's like I've, I've been trained to kind of know if it's quiet, it's not good, and if it's loud, it's not good, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't want to be the mom who just, like, sits him in front of a, a like, game console yeah. or just gives him whatever he wants because that's not good either. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about that. You want to be a good mother and practice good parenting techniques. Yeah. But sometimes it can get difficult to do it's that. mostly difficult. So, in what ways has this behavior impacted your child? Um, I'm wondering how it's affected his schoolwork. I know you talked about it a little bit before, but can you tell me more about that? Yeah, I don't, I mean, he, he makes B's and C's, so I think he's like a pretty, you know, average student. And I just, I don't, I think he's actually really smart. He just doesn't try. Okay. He doesn't try that hard. I never see him really doing homework at home. I don't know if he's just doing them at school. I don't know where he's doing them, but he doesn't, you know, every time I try to get him to do homework or even sit down with them, now that I'm at, I'm at home more, he says that he, you know, it's already done. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that he tries a lot. 
um, and he's passing, he's doing well, but like, like behaviorally, it really depends on which teacher, mm-hmm. you know, whose classroom he's in. Okay. Like he currently, he hates his um, history teacher okay. and he hates being in gym. Um, but he loves, you know, I think he really likes his math teacher. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that class isn't that bad. I don't get that many complaints from that class. Okay. But, um, you know, I just think he's not trying enough. He's he's had to, he failed a class, a grade before. Um, and he seemed like he wasn't, you know, too bothered by it. Because, of course, he doesn't really talk to me about it. But I, I can imagine that that's impacted him mm-hmm. some. I don't know. And he doesn't have any friends. Like, nobody, I don't think any of the, of his, like, other students, I don't think they like him that much. The um, other students in his class no. don't like him? I mean, he's always kind of like having to be the center of attention, or he's always mm-hmm. kind of messing things up, or he's always, you know, upset of somebody. And so, you know, some of these, they've known each other for a long time because a lot of them, you know, started in elementary school together. Mm-hmm. And so they're kind of used to his behavior that's just gotten worse. It's gotten worse. I think so. Or I don't know, maybe I'm just, my patience is just thin. Sounds like he's really struggling in school and his behavior as well. Um, You mentioned that he doesn't get too many complaints from his math teacher, right? Mm -hmm. What are some of the complaints that um, the gym teacher, history teacher has told you or shared with you? He's pretty disobedient. So like if they tell him to do something, he doesn't want to do it. He'll find ways to kind of like break the rules so they were supposed to bring in um, a certain uniform for Jim mm-hmm. and it was told that they were supposed to do it he had signed a paper I'd signed a paper for it and he purposely was the only person in class who wouldn't do it um when it was called kind of like you're not going to make me do it just because mm-hmm. you know yeah. so it's just kind of it's very disruptive and mm-hmm. like I you know I feel for them because a lot of teachers especially when we were in elementary school like really tried to kind of, you know, stop the behavior and reach out to me and Mm -hmm. I could be a little bit more active when he was in elementary school and like now his it just feels like maybe his maturity level is so different from the other kids. They don't, Mm -hmm. you know, that aren't gonna push the boundaries as much. Mm -hmm. Your son in comparison to the other kids will push these boundaries. I think so. I think he's always trying to see what he can push and Mm -hmm. like I don't know if he does it on purpose. I don't even know if he knows that that's what's happening, but that's what it always feels like, you know. There's somebody who's going to, like, everybody say no. It's almost like he has to say yes. Mm-hmm. Unless he really wants, you know, to say no. Mm-hmm. Then he cares, you know, he doesn't really seem to care what other people think. So from what you're telling me, he is disobedient, he's disruptive, and maybe manipulative in the classroom? Yeah. I haven't witnessed it myself, but it seems like that's what the teachers... Mm -hmm. I think that's another reason, like, the teachers don't have as much empathy for him. Mm -hmm. You know, just... Yeah, yeah, they've... they've, I get it all the time, so I can imagine. Like, they don't... Mm -hmm. They're not wanting to, like, try as hard or, you know, as as some other students who might act out, Mm because they're just, like, it feels like he's doing it. Like, to kind of mess with them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And mentioned that he doesn't have friends at school that no none of the students really want to be his friend because he is the center of attention mm-hmm. um but he has maybe one friend that he's close with correct mm-hmm. um what do they do together so i don't know if like my version my maybe i have a different idea of friendship but i remember being 12 and like it being a very reciprocal friendship where like i'd hang out at their place they'd hang out at my place we'd share things and I don't see that with Mark okay. and his friend David. Like, David really usually comes over to our place, you know. There was a few months back, um, David, or I guess last Christmas, David uh, got this Christmas present. Mm-hmm. He was really excited about it. And the next thing I know, a few weeks after that, the Christmas present was at our house. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like, Mark was like, this is kind of my toy, and David gave it to me. And I wouldn't, I don't know too many you know, 12-year-old kids that would really want something that would just kind of give it away that easily. But, it, you know, like, there's one thing with sharing, but it just felt like it was just taken um, or given, apparent, according to Mark. And um, it just doesn't seem, like, reciprocal. It just mm-hmm. seems like it's one-sided. And Mark really bosses David around a lot. And I said it makes me feel uncomfortable. It makes me feel pretty bad for David. But, like, 
Mark wouldn't have any any anybody else that puts up with him if mm-hmm. David wasn't around. It makes you feel uncomfortable. I kind of feel bad for David. You know, but my son needs a friend too, so it's like I don't, I don't, I feel really bad saying like to David that he needs to kind of, you know, put his boundaries up and not let Mark treat him like that sometimes. Mm-hmm. See, as a mom, you're kind of conflicted in yeah. a sense. If yeah. one time you want your son to have a friend and to um, have support and a good time with a buddy, yeah. but at the other hand. It's hard for you to see this friend almost get hurt by your yeah. son and be bossed around, as you mentioned. Yeah, and and David and Mark does not like it all when I try to like you know come in between and try to make things more fair. He gets really upset at me and really angry, and sometimes I'm just like I'll just leave the room because he'll just start yelling and mm-hmm. and David sees this too. He sees the parent and the adult in the room just kind of back mm-hmm. down, you know. So. So when your son gets angry, he's yelling, he's screaming, does he throw things? Like what does what else does he look like when he's angry? Sometimes he used to do that a lot more. I think, you know, like the first nine years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, he hasn't as much. Um, and I think that corresponded because he was a bed wetter until like mm-hmm. ten. And that's something that's like really embarrassing for him. Mm-hmm. Um and so I think like after like he was able to manage that and not do that as much, like he didn't act so out of control. Mm-hmm. But now, like I said, it's in a different way where, you know, he's a little bit more in control of himself. But that's also to me kind of like I'm waiting for the shoe to drop because okay. he, I know he's still upset about things. Mm-hmm. He's still upset about the same things. He just deals with them differently. And I feel like, you know, I might not pay right away, but I'm going to pay later on. Mm-hmm. You know, as a mother, that's what I feel. Yeah. I shouldn't feel that way. It's difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult to feel that way. Mm-hmm. So he's holding on to grudges and you don't know when he's gonna yeah. kind of let loose. Right. And I usually don't know what the grudges are. Like I'm step stepping on like, you know, landmines and I mm-hmm. never know what is it that's gonna it depends on the day and the mm-hmm. setting and where we are and yeah. you know, like today he was so upset because we left school early to come mm-hmm. here. And he was angry with me and just throwing a tantrum the whole time in the car and just yelling. And I had to, like, put the child off. He's 12 years old Mm -hmm. so that he's not getting out of the car. But then a few weeks ago when we went to the dentist appointment and we left school early around the same time, Mm -hmm. he was fine and he was happy. You know, Um, you can hear him out there right now. He's just, I can hear him and he's yelling. And, and I mean, it's the same time. We're leaving at the same time. We're, mm-hmm. I'm taking him out of school, but this is making him so angry. The last time he was so happy. Yeah. It's confusing. It's con- yeah. It's confusing to deal with. Yeah. Um, so I know you mentioned that you're done and that this has been going on for a really long time. Yeah. But what are some ways in the past that you've tried to manage his um, outbursts and his aggressiveness? Yeah, so this is our first time coming to like try any type of counseling or therapy. Um, when he was in elementary school, he had, you know, like special one-on-one attention, you know, a little okay. bit. Um, taking him to the pediatrician and they try to prescribe him ADHD medication, but I, I don't, I don't know. I just, I'm so worried about having this label on him mm-hmm. that I, and that he would like have to take medication for a long time. And I just, I don't know, I see some other kids with ADHD like in his classroom and like he has peers that have it and I know what that's like and I don't, it just seems slightly different a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just worried about having him put on, the, put on that track, you know, as like a young black boy to be given ADHD medication and whatever else is going on is not being treated, you know. And maybe it is ADHD and that's great, mm-hmm. but like I just feel like nothing was ever explained to us. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've done, you know, try to do like behavior management with like stickers that doesn't really work because he just kind of wants what he wants when he wants them um when he was younger we tried that we tried to like be really validating to him and try to sit down and understand what he wants and like i said he doesn't it's like it's hard for him to communicate what he wants he just gets really upset and then like you said like it's like a grudge Mm -hmm. you know we never know why he's upset so that doesn't work um we've tried you know punishing him and you know taking away like his 
um, games or putting him in time out like mm-hmm. when, when, before, when he ran away the other night and that doesn't work he just finds a way to defy whatever we do or he makes it so like makes us so miserable when we're trying something that we just give up yeah so like it's just nothing's worked nothing's working I can understand your your frustration and it looks like that you and your spouse have tried a lot of things to manage his behavior and it can get exhausting to keep trying things and to fail and to try again and for it to not work again. It's, it's a lot. Like I, you know, Patty, she comes home and she goes right to sleep. She eats dinner. She takes it in her room because Mark doesn't come downstairs to eat dinner anymore. He, he wants his food upstairs in his room so he can continue playing games and she doesn't want to deal with it if he comes downstairs. So she just goes right in and eats her food in her, in her room, just like he does. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm kind of left trying to be the mom, you know, to my daughter. And I don't get any sleep because I'm up. Like I get up in the middle of the night anxious waiting for mm-hmm. something to happen. Like I'm worried about, you know, Christina, my daughter, mm-hmm. and like hoping that she's okay because she's in a room by herself. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she's down the hall and I'm, honestly, I'm, I'm worried about that too, mm-hmm. that he might hurt her. Or he might get upset at her one day and he's gonna punish her so yeah. it's just a lot I, I'm on four hours of sleep right now yeah. and that's only because I knew I was coming here mm-hmm. sounds like you're very very upset by this and almost alone in the situation yeah. that you don't have the support of your wife helping you through this very challenging time yeah and I know she wants to. She just doesn't know how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. You know, she tries to be there more for Christina, mm-hmm. which is nice. But, like, we can't just let him go, mm-hmm. you know, by the wayside. Yeah. Other than your son's um, aggressive behaviors, is there anything else in the past that you'd like to bring up or any other areas that you've noticed are of concern? No. I mean, I don't know. It's like the chicken or the egg. I don't know if, you know, his peers don't like him because of mine and Patty's relationship, and maybe he's been being bullied because of that. Mm-hmm. Or I don't know if it's like they don't like him because of how he acts and that's one of the things that they might use. He doesn't talk mm-hmm. to me about that, but that's something that I'm I'm worried about. I know with Christina, she's found a good supportive group of, group of friends and that's not as much of an issue. And she went to the same schools, you know, as Mark did. That doesn't seem to be an issue for her, but I, I wonder if, you know, that's impacted him. You know, Patty came in, or, yes, Patty came into our lives, you know, when Mark was about, you know, 18 months. Mm-hmm. And so this is like, you know, that's really the only other partner that she's known or he's known. And so um, he's very much, she's very much a huge part of his life. Um, but I wonder if that for him is something that he, he hasn't really spoken to us about. I don't know how he's dealt with it and being aware that, you know, his family is a little bit different than other families. Um, but this is not something that he's talked about. Christina has brought it up, you know, when she was younger, but she has adjusted a lot well you know better okay so your daughter has brought this topic up of having a different family dynamic than mm-hmm. uh, maybe his peers do yeah but than her peers do but your son has not directly communicated any no. concerns or favors in either direction no okay. yeah and they don't you know patty and mark don't have the closest of relationships okay. i mean he's kind of like that with everybody but i think he puts up with me a little bit more mm-hmm. um He's kind of like that with his sister. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they don't, you know, they don't, like I said, she kind of avoids because it's like, what can, what does she feel like she can do? Um, you know, Patty's not obviously, you know, your biological mother or anything like that. She came into all of our lives when like we were kind of all together. Okay. Christina was, you know, I was pregnant with Christina at the time and, okay. um, you know, Mark was 18 months, but she's played stepped into that role and christina's much more accepted of her and listens to her and you know sees her as like an adult that she can be respectful of Mm -hmm. 
and I don't get that from Mark. And I wonder if, you know, that's part of it as well, or if he's just doesn't like her, or if he just, maybe she's another adult that he doesn't want to pay attention to. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But she gets it a lot harder than I do. Can you tell me more about their relationship with one another? So you said he doesn't maybe see her as this mother figure since she's not the biological mother. What else um, do you see? Um, I don't know. I think, you know, she was really there with me, like a partner, mm-hmm. as far as like parenting. You know, for the most part, like through elementary school, and she would like really try, and she would go to like the teacher conferences and and all of that. And he, I mean, he really he pushed my buttons, but he pushed her buttons a lot more. Mm-hmm. And it was hard because I think she was also seeing Christina, who was kind of like not getting as much attention, mm-hmm. um, and she was wanting to be there for Christina. And you know, I think it was kind of like adding on where Mark started this and then got upset. Mm-hmm. You know, that maybe Christina was getting more attention or had this different relationship with with Patty, Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, like, I don't know if that bothered him as well, because, once again, he doesn't really speak to me about any of this stuff, and I think Patty's just to the point where she's, like, damn, does she do this, damn, does she don't, and so Mm -hmm. she just kind of, like, wants to save her sanity and try to do as best as possible to still be present, you know, and it's, like, I don't say anything, because I don't, I don't want it where I'm pushing her, and Mm -hmm. I completely push her away. She doesn't have to be here, Mm -hmm. you know, she's, she's not really, you know, she just came in, and did the best she could and you know so you feel like she's doing the best she can so that she can maintain her own sanity and at the same time you're doing that as well for yourself for you you need to be able to keep your composure and your your um, presence in your home so that you can be a good mom to your daughter as well yeah it's, but it's getting harder and harder because I don't mm-hmm. have that choice. As much as Patty, Patty mm-hmm. can disengage and I can't because I'm the mom. Mm-hmm. And they see me as, I mean, you know, she's their mom, but like they see me as that person. Mm-hmm. And so I, I don't, I can't disengage. I can't, you know, Patty gets upset. She, that's kind of like, that's how she is. I'm mm-hmm. expected to be the understanding one and the one that's there. And I, that was me before Mark, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, where I was the really patient one and I was like the nice friend and I was the one that would listen. And now I just, I'm not allowed to be anything other than that. Mm-hmm. And Mark knows he can, you know, I'm always going to be trying to be understanding and try to be on his side. And I just, I don't want to see him get picked, picked at by mm-hmm. other people. But yeah. I understand why people are upset. So I'm always going to go to his defense. Yeah. But I know that he, he really can be hurtful to people mm-hmm. and be mean to people. Yeah. So at one time, you, you and your wife both hold different roles but you specifically have hi- a higher standard that Mark holds for you, and he expects more from you. Is that yeah, right? I think he knows that he can get away with, with me, you know, with some things more. Christina, too, because she's putting, she's, you know, she pulls boundaries with her kids. Mm-hmm. But I, I think with him, it's kind of like he knows I'm going to, like, come to his side. And cause I don't like seeing him hurt. That's my baby mm-hmm. boy, you know. So I, I think he knows that he can push it a little bit. Where, where Patty will just be like, nope. And if you don't listen, I'm, I'm getting away, you know, or she would try to be the, she used to try to be the disciplinarian before it was just too much for her. And I'm the one who's just kind of like, no, let's just give him a chance. Let's try to be understanding. Let's, like I said, she wanted to put him into an inpatient, you know, residential home. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, let's try this. Let's try to come once a week. I'm so much more, under, you know, understanding because I just, you know, he's still my baby boy. Mm-hmm. So you're here today with your son to address and find ways to manage his behaviors. It looks like it's been affecting his school life, his social life, um, his life at home. Uh, You mentioned that he doesn't have a relationship with his sister and you're very concerned about her safety um, within the home and worried about whether he's going to hurt her or punish her. Um, You also mentioned that Mark has tendencies to be out of control, you know, he, uh, like you said, wants to get out of the car while it's moving, or leaves home at night and his whereabouts are unknown, and as a parent, that's very concerning for you, and um, you really want to bring some security and some um, safety into his life so that he can um, make friends better, and 
be successful in school and as a parent these are the things that you really want to work on for more yeah and I hope that soon like we can fix it because he's getting older and he's getting bigger and like when he's 16 and 17 18 you know not only do I have to worry about Christina and, and her safety but I have to worry about Patty and my safety because you know we he's gonna be bigger than us mm-hmm. you know and there's gonna be a time where it's not just throwing tantrums you know I'm really worried that like we might be in harm, you know, or he might take something out on us. And I don't know if he intends, he intentionally does it sometimes, or he's just like so out of control that he does it. But, you know, that's something I'm thinking about because he's going to be turning 13 soon. And I mean, the hormones are going to start kicking in. And, you know, so I'm very much aware that there's going to be a point where like, you know, he's not going to be my little boy anymore. Mm -hmm. You're worried that as he gets older and if he doesn't seek help, it's going to get worse and worse. And and that's scary for you. Very scary. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna shift gears and talk a little bit about risk assessment. Mm-hmm. Um, has your child ever mentioned thoughts about being dead or would like to be dead? No. In his lifetime? No. Or in the past month? No. Has your child ever mentioned a wish to be dead or wish to go to sleep and never wake up? No. In the lifetime? No. Or in the past month? No. Has your child ever mentioned a thought about doing something to make himself not alive anymore in the past month? No. Or in his lifetime? Did your child ever do anything to kill himself or make himself not alive anymore? No. This is uncomfortable. Yeah, these are these are heavy conversations to have, but I appreciate your your openness and your willingness. Mm-hmm. How about in the past month? No. Has he engaged in non-suicidal or self-injurious behaviors? No. How about in the past month? No. Um, And what about self-injurious behaviors where the intent was unknown in his lifetime? No. And? Has there ever been a time when he started to do something to make himself not alive anymore? That something stopped him before he could actually do anything in the past month? No. And how about in the lifetime? No. Has there been a child when, a time when your child started to do something to make himself not alive anymore, but changed his mind before he could? And not in the past month or lifetime. Yeah. Has your child done anything to get away to make himself not alive anymore? Things like um, writing goodbye notes, getting things together. No. Okay, so now um, I'm going to ask your son to come in, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time with him, um, getting to know him a little better, and uh, just talking to him. Is there anything that we discussed today that you would not like me to share with your son? Just just please don't make it think that I'm, like, I'm mad at him. Or mm-hmm. I don't want him to think that. I don't want him to know, like, I'm frustrated and I'm done with him. Okay. And also, like, you know, that his sister might be upset or Patty might be upset with him. Mm -hmm. I don't want, you know, him to be upset at them later on for things that I've said. Okay, so you don't want me to mention anything that you're 
that you're upset or that um, the sister might be scared or the mom, the yeah. other partner is yeah. worried. Yeah, he might get really mad if he thinks that you're talking about him like that. Okay. Things like that. Okay, no problem. Well, okay. It's great meeting you. Right. Um, thank you, and we will get your son. Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm Gabriella. I'm a graduate student here um, at the clinic, and I just want to um, tell you a little bit about confidentiality. What's that? Um, so basically, any information that you share here with me today is um, only going to be shared with my clinic staff and my supervisor, unless it's about hurting yourself or someone else. So some people come to therapy to self-explore and other people come to talk about specific problems. The goal of today is to just get to know you better and to understand your goals and to decide whether our clinic can best meet your needs. So we may determine that our clinic will best meet your needs. If that happens, you'll be matched with a therapist. Um, and they'll be given the information. But if we can't, then you'll be given a referral information um, so that you can receive services that best aligns with your goals. Okay. Do I have to be here? Um, well, since you're here, we might as well make a good time out of it. What do you think? I don't want to be here. Yeah. How come? I was forced to come here with the mom. Mm -hmm. Your mom forced you to be yeah. here? And I'm like really annoyed that I'm here. Mm -hmm. I've been sitting out there for like 40 minutes waiting. Yeah. And nobody told me anything. Mm -hmm. No one told you about why you're here you today? Could have told me that I was going to come talk to somebody, but I don't okay. know you. Yeah. Yeah, that can be really frustrating and, and scary to talk to somebody you don't know. So, you agree I don't have to be here? Um, well, just for the remaining, let's see, 10 minutes, we're going to talk and we're going to get to know each other a little bit better. Can we do 10 minutes? I mean, I don't know if I'm going to talk. Okay. But, you know, I'll be here. It's only because I can't leave. My mom hit the keys. Okay, your so mom can, hit the keys? Yeah, I can drive. Oh, you, can you drive? Yeah. What kind of car? But you said it's confidential, right? Um, yes. So uh, the information is confidential unless it's about hurting yourself or something. Oh else. yeah, I can drive. I take her keys all the time and drive. She doesn't know that I do that. Okay, your mom doesn't know that you drive. Hell no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She might get a little upset, you know. But it's whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure she would get upset. Yeah. What do you like about driving? I just get to do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. Like, I know you're supposed to wait till you're, you know, 16 or 18 or whatever it is, but, like, yeah. why if I could just do it now? Yeah. Yeah. Driving. I watch some YouTube videos and I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. So you learned how to drive from YouTube? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can learn anything on YouTube. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else do you learn on YouTube? I don't know. I don't know. How to play games, mm -hmm. video games, mm -hmm. you know. Uh... Yeah, it's just whatever I want. Play cards, 
you know. Well, what kind of video games do you play? Super Mario. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do you have a favorite character? <sighs> no. Death Con 3. Okay. You know. I like I like the green monster in Super Mario. Death Con 3, I really like it because uh -huh. um, I just got a new thing that I can use as like a gun. Okay. And like I can, it's like almost like 3D mm -hmm. and it just moves and I like that. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Excuse me, are you any good at video games? I'm, of course, I'm, good. I'm the best. Oh, you're the best. Yes. What kind of scores do you have? I don't know. Like, you know, this kid David who comes over all the time, mm -hmm. he just always wants to hang out with me. I always beat him. Okay. And he, he doesn't do, you know, he's not that good. He's not that good. No. But you're better? I'm, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what are some things you and David do together other than video games? I just kind of do me, he all, you know, he just comes over, so he just kind of do, does whatever I'm doing. Okay. And then sometimes, you know, just like, it's kind of boring, so I just have him do whatever I want him to do. So. So you tell, would you consider him your friend? I mean, he's, it's, it's all right. It's cool to have somebody around, you mm -hmm. know. What's so cool so. about it? It's like, for instance, I'm really hungry right now. Okay. And if he was here. He, like, I can get him to go, like, make me a sandwich, uh -huh. you know, as, as, like, I continue playing. Because, okay. like, I don't like going downstairs because I want to be around other people. Okay. And so, he, you know, he'll do that kind of stuff. Or, um, you know, his mom and his dad, they're both, like, pharmacists. Mm -hmm. They make, like, a lot of money. And so, like, whatever games he has, I get to play with. Okay. He just kind of lets me do it, mm -hmm. you know. You mentioned you don't like being around other people. No, people just get on, they just get on my nerves. It irritates me. What are some of the reasons that people get so many nerves? I don't know. They just, like, I want to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And they just don't want to let me do it. And that's like, you know, when I was in, like, fourth grade, mm -hmm. that was cool because I was a little kid. But now I'm 12. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the sixth grade. And so I come to middle school now. So I should be able to, like, I know how to, I know how to deal with myself and, like, live life mm -hmm. and said I can drive so like yeah. I'm an adult I'm yeah. a grown ass man you're an adult yeah oh, so you don't like it when people tell you what to do no yeah. um, are there people that um, that frustrate you more than others yeah um I like everybody, especially people that try to, you know, they think they can tell you the most. Like, okay. like Patty. Oh, I can't stand her. Mm -hmm. She just like she feels like she's like a, the head of the household. Mm -hmm. That don't mean anything. Just because she he brings home the money, mm -hmm. she can't tell me what to do. She can tell my mom what to do, because mm -hmm. my mom, you know, will listen to her. But sometimes I have to let her know that she she's not the boss of me. So okay. like, you know, yeah. And I can't stand my his my um my history teacher. Mm -hmm. He's always making us do these stupid things that don't even make sense. And so when I tell him it doesn't make sense, he gets mad at me. But if he would have listened to me, then he would know it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. How are some of the ways that Patty acts like a boss in your home? Well, like whenever she comes home, like the energy shifts in the in the house. Cause mm -hmm. like usually if she's not home, everybody kind of does their own thing. They leave me alone. You know, if I'm hungry, my mom will bring me a plate mm -hmm. to eat first. You know, if David's not there. And then when she's home, you know, mom will set up a plate for her, too. And I'm like, no, I liked how things were before. Okay. You liked how things were before. Yeah, before she came home. Mm -hmm. What was it like before? Like I said, I, I kind of run the house. Okay. You know, like, my mom's, you know, she's she's my mom and everything, so she's mm -hmm. cool people. But, like, you know, for the most part, I kind of get what I want. Mm -hmm. And then Patty comes around, and, like, all of a sudden, everybody thinks that they can tell me no. No. Mm -hmm. So it's frustrating for you for Patty to come in and kind of change. Yeah, she tries to be my boss. Mm -hmm. And you don't like that. No. Mm -hmm. um, so you said that your mom didn't tell you anything about why you're here today. Not really. Right? Um, she knew I wouldn't want to come here. I would have okay. found a way to not come here. Uh -huh. But she told me. 
So what is this? Um, this is just a session to get to know you better and to understand um, if there's anything going on and if I can, um, if we can see if there's a need for you to receive help here at our clinic and to find someone that best meets those needs. Help for what? Um, yeah, so that's what I want to ask you. Um, is there anything that you would think you would need help with right now? No, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, is there anything going on in school that's been um, different than before? Sorry. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Um, you can give me a minute to just look over this document. I noticed here that um, there's a few things that are checked off on this checklist. Um, and maybe you can tell me a little bit more about why it's checked. Um, so it says... Did I do that? Um, I think this was filled out by your mother. Um, it's just what a documentation. Um, so it says that you have are experiencing problems with your friends, is that correct? No, I'm good. I'm, I'm okay with being by myself. You're okay with being yeah, by yourself? Friends. Okay. I mean, you know, it's cool every once in a while, but like, sometimes they don't want to listen to me either. It's okay. kind of hard to do me. Sometimes your friends don't want to listen yeah. to you, is that so correct? So I'm just like, I would rather just do me. Dave is cool, mm -hmm. I keep him around because, you know, yeah, he listens to me. Mm -hmm. So you um, prefer to be alone without your friends? Is that what I'm hearing? I'd rather be by myself okay. and just without people telling me what to do or, you know, trying to control me or, you know, telling me I'm wrong or not mm -hmm. listening when I want something. Mm -hmm. Then to have people, you know, who won't listen to me. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, what happens when... Um, people don't listen to you or you do get bounced around what it, what does that feel like for you I just get really mad you get mad like really mad like when I was coming over here and my mom didn't tell me where we were going mm -hmm. cause I thought we were just leaving school early you know to get some McDonald's mm -hmm. and she you know she gave me the McDonald's and then instead of going home we went the other way okay. and she wouldn't tell me and I was mad yeah. I didn't even want my McDonald's I just threw it out the window you threw it out the yeah. window so you were very mad that you were given no direction. I was kind why. of, I mean, I've been mad, more mad. But okay. like, that was still like, she, you know, she could have told me. Because mm -hmm. I've asked her three times and she didn't tell me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's annoying to mm -hmm. not know and to feel like you don't have a voice yeah. in where you're going and what you're doing. Um, you mentioned that you've been more mad before. Can you give me an example of what that looks like? I don't know. I think like, Back in the day, you know, I used to, like, my mom used to say I used to throw tantrums. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was tantrums. I just wanted what I wanted. Okay. And it always worked, so. It always you know. worked for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Used to kick a lot and stuff. Like, you know, I'm older now, so I'm trying to be, you know, like, a, I'm a grown man's at it, okay. so I don't do that as much. Okay. You know? But, like, when I was younger, I used to do it because it, mm -hmm. it used to work. Because, like, if I wanted something, I'd just get it. Mm -hmm. So... Before you would kick, would you yell? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. But now, because you want to be a grown man, you try your best not to do that anymore? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, I try not to do that okay. too much. How's that working for you? I mean, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you find that there's things that help you to manage uh, when you get mad or angry? The only thing that works is when people, you know, stop telling me what to do, uh -huh. or they do what I want them to do. Okay. Then I won't get angry. Okay. 
So until you get the results that you want, you would um, act in a certain <coughs> way. Is that right? I guess, yeah. Okay. Have you ever tried, like, breathing techniques no. or walking away? No. I like playing more games or okay. video games. Your video games. So I know you mentioned that you and Patty, was it, mm -hmm. um, don't get along as great and you really don't like that she acts like the boss of the house. Um, is there anyone at school, you mentioned the history teacher, can you tell me more about that relationship that you have with your teacher? No relationship. He's just always trying to, he's always just rude and mean uh -huh. and he's just always trying to tell me what to do. He tells everybody, but I feel like he has it out for me. Like, oh. he's always telling me what to do. He's always, when he's telling the rules, he'll look at me 20 times. Uh -huh. You know, he'll look at everybody else maybe once or twice. Right. Like, you're just mean and rude and disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And I don't like being called out. Mm -hmm. You feel like he's calling you out? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, you know, I was a little hard on him at first, but now it's just like, it's unfair. Because he's a teacher. He should be, he should be the grown-up. How were you being mean and rude at first? You know, sometimes like he would, you know, tell us like give an assignment and like I wouldn't do it or I'd do it wrong on purpose or like I was just playing with him. Mm -hmm. And now I just feel like he has it out for me. He has it out for you? Yeah. That must be frustrating. Yeah, because there'll be somebody right next to me chewing gum. Uh -huh. And then if he'll hear like a gum pop, he'll always call my name out. That just makes me mad. I can understand why you'd be mad, especially when you're not doing anything wrong and you're getting blamed for something that someone else is doing. Yeah. Right? I like you. I think you should, you know, you should come with me to school. Because you don't, you just let me be me. Like, he wouldn't do that. He would just shut up or tell me to be quiet. Mm -hmm. Sounds like you're looking for people to just give you a chance. And, yeah. I guess. Yeah. And to maybe hear your side. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, do you think, is there anything that happened before um, you started like yelling and screaming? Is there anything that you think occurred before? No, I just, happened? I think it just makes me mad. You feel like things just make me mad when it doesn't go on my way. Mm -hmm. I think everybody's like that. I don't know why people are on me. Everybody, like my mom gets upset when you know when she burned the chicken. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody tries to bring her to come see somebody mm -hmm. and talk to somebody. Why is it me? Yeah. Nobody wants to deal with their own stuff. It's always me. It's always mm -hmm. Mark. You feel like everything's always on you, like they're the lights always, on you. Yeah, they're always picking on me mm -hmm. for the same stuff. You would get mad if you don't get your way, right? Mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah, it's it's natural to get upset, and it's. I can really understand why you get upset when um, things don't go your way and when um, you're being picked at and you feel like everyone's always looking at you as if you're always making bad mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I understand why you why you feel that way. Um, so. Besides this, is there anything else that's going on either at home or at school that you want to tell me about or anything that you can think of? No, no, I'm good. Okay. Um, so you came in today and um, you talked to me a little bit about how you really just don't like people bossing you around. You would much rather have things go your way. Um, but in school and at home, you feel like you're just being picked at and that people are just looking at you and not hearing you out or giving you the benefit of doubt, and it's making you really frustrated. Mm -hmm. um, and you have interests. You like playing video games, um, and you do have a friend that you um, seem to be connecting with well, yeah. but um, you just are maybe struggling with forming different types of relationships and maybe 
um, communicating well to others about what you're feeling and what's going on instead of um, trying to act out or to um, to um, be yelling or screaming. So um, is that is that correct? Yeah. Is that what you're hearing? Yeah. Okay. 